Good morning, students. Welcome back to your English Gorge Book class. Today we see the lesson 3 Ode to a Butterfly. Today I will tell you the summary of this poem. Your work is you have to go through the poem, read, and try to understand. Okay? This is a poem written by Thomas Wentworth Hengson. In the poem, the poet expresses his praise and admiration for the butterfly and wonders at its beauty and freedom. In the first stanza, the poet calls the butterfly a spark of life. He says the floating butterfly often has wings that are colored in gold. He says that even though the butterfly cannot sing or make any sounds, nature has colored it with so much beauty that it does not need songs or words to fly among the singing birds. The poet says that all children love butterflies and love chasing them among the fields and gardens and flowers. In the second stanza, the poet wonders why the butterflies are born to the flowers in the gardens. He calls them liberate because their wings allow them to fly wherever they want. He wonders if the flowers too will fly away after the day is over. He asked if they will also fly and be free like the butterfly while hovering over their garden. The poet wonders in the third stanza if the butterflies get their vibrant beauty from the heavens. He himself says that when the sunset tints the sky with vibrate and fairy shades, fragments of this Beautifully colored sky are may be taken to form the body of the butterflies. He says that just like how the sunset gives myriad colors to the sky for a few brief moments, the sky gives the colors to the butterfly for a brief period before they die. In the next stanza, the poet talks about the freedom that butterflies enjoy. He says that bird build a nest and leave there and near their young babies. Mice also live in their holes, but the butterfly can fly anywhere and live anywhere. To the poet, it is a free creature that can fly through any wood or fill and look for food anywhere it wants. It can flit from flower to flower in search of sweet nectar without the need to stay in one place. Dear students, I hope this is clear to you. In next stanza, we see the poet describes how the garden lays forth a sometimes banquet for the butterfly with all the sweet smelling flowers that live there. He says that the tiny butterfly needs only a drop of honey or nectar. Anything more will be like drugging it. The butterfly does not need a large amount of food to set it itself. They says that the butterfly never closes its eyes and is always sober because it eats only a little. The poet concludes the poem by reflecting on how man is inspired to fly with intelligence and freedom. When he looks at the butterfly, he says, 
that when death finds man, his spirit will soar into the sky, much like the butterfly. He calls the butterfly immortal because it becomes a symbol of life and freedom to him. Always fluttering everywhere around us, he hopes man's souls and spirit will also be immortal and be finally free from confines and shackle of life. Dear students, I hope this chapter or this poem is clear to you. I will show you the video of upon this poem. Go through it and try to understand this chapter more clearly. Okay? Ode to a Butterfly Oh, beautiful butterfly, look how you wander among these birds that sing. You have nature's beauty in your wings of gold. Children love to run after you, leaving behind the beautiful flowers and the flock of goats. Oh, butterfly, what is it that ties you to these flowers? Will they also leave their homes and fly off with you one day? Where, oh, where did you get this color from? Did it drop on you from heaven? Was it at dusk when the sun was leaving its last imprint behind that the treetops got some of it and dropped on you? I have seen birds in their nests, caring for and feeding their young. Even the field mouse has a home where it lives. But you, my dear butterfly, are a free bird. You have no home and keep moving around the forest, looking for nectar on every flower you meet. Dear butterfly, the garden is like a party spread for you. Every flower has food for you. If one does not satisfy you, then you can simply move to another without any worries. You look calm and never seem to bat an eyelid. How peaceful you appear. You have no aspirations of your own. But we look up to you and your hard work. When our days are low, we get motivation from you. You are a symbol of life because, come what may, we always find you hard at work. <laughs>